three tales of the girl, Edna Ligon, as she was growing up. That must have driven her mother to despair, because she was always, as a small child, getting into trouble. She began this trouble getting into when she was barely able to get around. She went outside and down toward the hog pasture where her father was feeding the hogs. Her father was Frank Matthews and her mother was Laura Tatum. Laura stood in the doorway of the little log cabin back in the woods in which they lived. Said, Frank, watch Edna. She's coming toward the hog pasture. Man like Frank said, I will, and then promptly forgot about Edna. And she crawled through a hole in the fence. Nobody else could have gotten through it. And crawled right on up toward the hog. Of course, a mother is always watching her children, we hope. And she saw Edna crawling to the hog patch. But she was too far off to grab her. But she yelled, Frank, watch Edna, she's in the hog patch. Frank turned around and there was the old mama style, just about to take a bite out of his daughter Edna, barely able to walk. He kicked the hog and snatched Edna up and jumped over the fence and took her to the house and bleeding from her eyebrow. But it was not a serious wound and Edna soon recovered. They thought, well, things will be all right now. She had a a fatal weakness. She loved glass, and under the house she would go, where old broken bottles lay. It was a forecast of her coming love for bottles when she was a grown and old woman. But anyhow, at this particular time, she delighted in tormenting her mother by crawling on the house and her mother couldn't get under there, and playing, and her mother would beg and plead to come out, thinking that when she did, she would be cut to pieces on the broken glass, but never cut. She even picked the glass out from in between her teeth, but never a serious injury. Well, said her mother, she's got by that stage. She'll soon be so big she can't get under there. She won't get with anything else. But she did. They went over to see Grandma one day. Grandma and Grandpa lived across the bayou. And Grandpa had an old bad mule that was in the stable, locked up securely. The mule had pawed and kicked all day long. And mother had said, watch Edna, don't let her get around that old mule. They thought they were watching her, but Edna walked around the stable and she saw where the mule had kicked off a plank. So in the hole she crawled to see what the kicking mule looked like. She screamed and her mother heard her. Oh, her mother said, where is Edna? And Paul said, where is she? And her mother said, he thought, she thought he said, here she is, but she wasn't. She's in the stable, said her mother. I just know. The mule was kicking away. And mother tried to undo the gate, but it was wrapped and wrapped with a string around a nail, and it took her forever to get the gate open. But finally she did, and into the plot she went and up to the stable. She reached her hand into that hole that the mule had kicked it, the kicking of plank aside, and she stumbled around in there in the dirty manure until she found the body of a small girl and pulled her out. She was covered with dirt and manure and was unconscious. Her mother told her husband, Frank. Once again, she's calling Frank in Frank terms about Edna. Go get the doctor down to Chase real quick. Edna's dead. And Frank got on his trusty horse and galloped off about a mile down toward Chase. We we're sure there must have been a doctor there because he came back after a while with the doctor. By that time, though, Laura, the mother, had gotten all the dirt and manure out of Edna's mouth and eyes and nose and ears and found that she was breathing, and so she had her cleaned up and she was asleep, and all was well just one more time. It was several years later before the next calamity happened. This time, the family had moved over on the road alongside the railroad, and they lived just across from the railroad. And Frank, the father, plowed across the railroad. He had a field over there. And Edna, the little girl, always drove her mother crazy by going up on the railroad track to pick violets. One of her neighbors that lived back behind on a higher hill would say, Laura, do you know where Edna is? No, said Laura, she had by this time a little baby boy named Sam, and a little girl 
they did name Bertie. So this woman would tell Laura that Edna was over on the railroad track picking ballots. So one day, Laura had to take Frank some water when he was crying. She took Edna with her and left the babies asleep. So they got in to where they crossed the railroad track to go into the field, and here came a slow choo-choo train. Laura said to Edna, now wait, this don't go across until the train gets through. I won't, said Edna, and immediately she darted across the railroad track right in front of that train. That poor mother had to stand there in helpless agony and wait until that slow freight train got across and up the railroad track before she knew whether Edna was safe on the other side or ground up into mint meat. Fortunately, she was safe on the other side, having nimble legs and running very fast. She was standing there beside her father, who was crying the youth. And as Laura came on over with the water, she let Frank drink his water. And then she said, Frank, I want one of those ropes off in that harness that you've got hitched to that mule to the plow. Why, said Frank, I want to give a little girl a whipping. Oh, no, said Edna. Yes, said Mother, you disobeyed me. I told you not to cross in front of that train. And she took the rope and she bore down on the legs of the little girl Edna all the way home. She had taught Edna a lesson, I guess. I don't know that she ever again ran in front of a train. But I'm sure she caused her mother some more anxious moments before she was up big enough to do better, we hope.